This video will cover the basic mechanics of linear regression, also known as ordinary least squares, or OLS. At the end of this video, you should feel comfortable explaining how the ordinary least squares, or OLS, method estimates the best fit line, explaining what a residual is, explaining what an estimator is, and distinguishing between population parameters and sample estimates of those parameters. Suppose you are faced with the following question. What is the relationship between two variables, x and y, given a set of data on those variables? This is a common question in many disciplines. Economists may wish to know the relationship between the quantity of a good purchased and its price, while engineers may be interested in the relationship between the force of air resistance on an object and its speed. Abstracting from any specific example, consider the set of data represented on this graph. Could you draw a relationship between x and y that best fits the data? Well, we could imagine drawing various curves through the data. We will start with a simpler question. What line best fits these data? Linear regression attempts to answer this question, although we will see in another video that linear regression provides more flex flexibility in the shape of the relationship than its name implies. You might posit a guess that this green line is a reasonably good fit for the data. It appears to go roughly through the middle of the data set. We could probably also agree that this blue line is a poor fit for the data, as it clearly doesn't capture the trend we see in the data. But is the green line the best line we can draw? Is this orange line slightly better than the green line, or is it slightly worse? Two people are unlikely to draw the exact same line in a graph, so how do we make sure we all agree on the relationship given the same set of data. No straight line can go through every point, so which of all the possible lines we might draw is as close as, a, as possible to all of the data points. Before we can talk about linear regression, a discussion of notation will help. Let's start with the data. The points on this graph could also be represented in table form with a column for x and a column for y. Since x and y can take on many values, we use subscripts to denote the observation number. x1 is the x-coordinate of the first point, also the value of x in the first row of the data set. y1 is the corresponding y-coordinate and the value of y in the first row of the data set. We similarly define x2, y2, x3, y3, and so on. More generally, we could choose a generic observation number, i, so that the coordinates of the ith observation are x sub i, y sub i. This ordering may be arbitrary in many datasets. Note that we could shuffle the rows of the dataset and still have the same points plotted on the graph. Let's add what we believe is a best fit line. If you knew a value of x for observation i, but did not know the corresponding y, what would you guess is that value? Presumably, you would look at what the best fit line predicts. We would find the point on the line with the given xi coordinate and look at the corresponding y value of that point. This is our predicted y. We distinguish this predicted y for observation i from the actual value by adding a hat symbol over the y. So yi hat is the predicted value for observation i. We've identified a predicted value graphically, but how could we accomplish this calculation algebraically? You learned in an algebra class that the mathematical equation for line has the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of a line and b is its y-intercept. We'll use the same form, but adapt the notation slightly. First, we add the i subscript to x and y, since these predictions apply to all points. Second, we add a hat to y, since the equation tells us the predicted values of y. Finally, we use the Greek letter beta in place of m and b. Beta 1 is the slope, and beta 0, sometimes called beta naught, is the y-intercept, that is, the predicted y when x equals 0. For reasons that we will clarify by the end of this video, we will also place a hat over these betas to indicate that they are predicted or estimated values as well. If we find a way of estimating beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat from the dataset, 
we will be able to calculate the predicted y value for any data point. Let's remind ourselves of our original goal, finding the best fit line. Notice that if we compared each predicted value y hat to the corresponding actual value y, some of our predictions are better than others. That is, some of the predicted y values are closer to the corresponding actual y values. Presumably, we'd like these differences to be relatively small. Accordingly, we define a residual for an observation as the difference between the actual and predicted value. Mathematically, the residual E for observation I equals the actual value Y minus its predicted value Y hat. This definition means that the residual is positive if the point is above the best fit line, that is, we underpredicted the Y value, and the residual is negative if the point is below the best fit line, that is, we overpredicted the Y value. With these formulas, we could calculate the residual from the actual x and y and the estimated slope beta 1 and intercept beta 0. With this notation in hand, we can talk more concretely about our criteria for a best fit line. Presumably, we'd like the residuals to be as close as possible to 0. Of course, we could focus on one residual and easily make that 0 by drawing our line directly through that point so that the actual and predicted y are the same. But that could make another residual larger. So how do we handle these trade-offs? Rather than focus on one residual, we can consider all by minimizing the sum of their absolute values. The absolute value is important since residuals can be negative, and we want to penalize large residuals regardless of whether they are positive or negative. A closely related alternative is to minimize the sum of the squared residuals. Like an absolute value, squaring the residuals ensures that the positive and negative residuals do not cancel out. It also penalizes larger residuals more. For instance, the residual for observation 8, where the red line is about 15 units, so that point alone adds about 225 squared units to the sum of the squared residuals for that line. By contrast, the residual for observation 7 for the green line is about 5 units, so that point adds about 25 square units to the sum of squared residuals for that line. We would likely find that the red line has a higher sum of squared residuals than the green line because the red line has a few particularly large residuals. Although minimizing either the sum of absolute residuals or the sum of squared residuals would be perfectly reasonable, the standard procedure for linear regression minimizes the sum of squared residuals, or SSR. This objective function gives linear regression its more formal name, ordinary least squares, or, o or OLS. One reason to minimize SSR is that the mathematical procedures that follow are simpler, although the Gauss-Markov theorem, not covered in this video, provides another good reason. If we can agree to choose a best fit line by minimizing the SSR, how exactly do we go about doing that? We could try many different lines, calculate the SSR of each one, and select the line with the lowest SSR, but this would be a time-consuming endeavor. Instead, a short mathematical derivation will make our job much easier. A more specific way of stating our objective is that we wish to minimize the sum of the squares of all residuals E by choosing an intercept beta 0 hat and a slope beta 1 hat. Furthermore, we can write each residual E as the actual value Y minus the predicted value Y hat, which is also the intercept beta 0 hat plus the slope beta 1 hat times X. Remember that the values of X and Y are given. They are part of the data set. We are trying to choose beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat to best fit those points. Recall from your calculus class that to find the minimum of a function, you can set the first derivative equal to 0. Here we can set two separate first derivatives equal to 0, one with respect to beta 0 hat and the other with respect to beta 1 hat. We'll skip over the rest of the derivation for now, although note that it is relatively straightforward. The derivative of the summation is the sum of the derivatives of each term, and you can use the power rule and chain rule to differentiate the inside term. The end result is the following simplified first-order conditions. 
In other words, these formulas tell us the best fit line that minimizes the SSR. Specifically, the slope beta 1 hat is the sample covariance of x and y divided by the sample variance of x, and the intercept beta 0 hat is the mean of y minus the slope times the mean of x. It is straightforward to calculate all of these quantities using a variety of statistical programs. Let's step back from these technical details to think about the steps for implementing OLS in practice. Given a set of data points on x and y, we hypothesize that x and y have an imperfect linear relationship. We will discuss the slight differences between this equation and our earlier equation for a line shortly. We apply the OLS estimator, that is the formula we just derived, to find the slope beta 1 hat and the intercept beta 0 hat for the line that best fits these data. We might use these estimates for one of two reasons. We could look at the estimated slope and or intercept to describe the relationship between x and y. Alternatively, we could use a value of x to predict the corresponding value of y. Let's now return to a subtle but important distinction we made in writing the equations describing the hypothesized relationship and the estimated relationship. This is the distinction between a population relationship and a sample relationship. The population relationship is our hypothesis about how x and y are related. It says that for each value of x, the corresponding y is determined by multiplying x by a slope beta 1, adding an intercept beta 0, and also adding an error term u. When we make this hypothesis, we do not know the values of the intercept beta 0 and the slope beta 1. Similarly, we do not know the error terms u, which are drawn from a random distribution. The population relationship is sometimes called a data generating process because it says how we think values of y are generated from x. Imagine the first value of x entering a black box. That black box plugs the value of x into the linear equation, adds a random error term, and outputs the resulting y. A similar process would happen for the remaining values x2, x3, and so on. We'd ideally like to open that black box to see the data generating process. You might imagine the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 as internal settings of the data generating process going in, on inside of this black box. In practice, we can't do that. Note the color coding of this diagram. We observe the data, x and y, which are shown in green, but we do not observe the data generating process, or at least the parameters of that process, nor do we observe the random error u. These are shown in blue. Instead, we have to take our best guess at the parameters by looking at the x and y values. Here's where our sample relationship comes in. Although the equations for the sample relationship look very similar, they represent our best guess at the actual relationship. The first equation says that the predicted y, denoted y hat, is a linear function of x. Alternatively, the second equation says that the actual y is equal to that same linear prediction plus a residual e. We can apply the OLS estimator to calculate our best guess at the parameters beta 0 and beta 1. The hats on the beta 0 and beta 1 in our sample relationship indicate that they are our best guesses or estimates of the population parameter. We can also calculate the residuals e as the difference between the actual y values and the predictions. They are similar to the population model's error terms, except that we never know the actual error terms, only our best guesses of those errors, the residuals. Since the residuals are estimated values of the errors, we sometimes call them u hat, with the hat again denoting a prediction. Although we hope we are estimating the parameter accurately, we generally should not expect the sample estimates beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat to equal the population parameters beta 0 and beta 1. To see this, let's try a simulation. Although we normally never know the parameters of the population relationship, we will generate a data set, that is a sample, using a data generating process that we choose. In this process, the intercept beta 0 is negative 10 and the slope beta 1 is positive 3. Here is the set of data that we generated from this process, with the population relationship shown in blue and the data points shown in green. 
we can use the OLS estimator, the formulas we derived earlier, to find the best fit line or the sample relationship. Here is the graph with the best fit line shown as a green line along with the corresponding sample relationship in equation form. We could compare either the two lines on the graph or the numerical parameters to their estimates to see that our sample relationship is fairly close to the population relationship in this case, but it's not exactly the same because of the random errors that affected each of the y values. Now let's use the same data generating process to create additional samples of x and y and then fit a best fit line to each one. Note that each time we get a slightly different sample relationship despite having the same population relationship. Again, this is due to the randomness in the data generating process and so each sample estimate of the slope or intercept is most likely different from the actual values of the population parameter. Econometric concepts covered elsewhere will help us to quantify how close the sample estimates are to the population parameters.